Our next speaker, Dr. Stephen Haltewanger. He is board certified in neurology. He got into nutritional medicine about 30 years ago, and he started doing nutritional treatments of neurological diseases. And that is groundbreaking work, especially at that time. 25 years ago, he got into electromagnetic biology. And by the way, he is a graduate of the Medical College of Georgia. Now, for the past 20 years, he's been lecturing. Past 10 years, he's been mainly devoted to research, and he is the Health and Science Director of the LifeWay Corporation. Let's welcome Dr. Stephen Haltwanger. Well, thank you very much. Um, since my slides are over here, I'll have to look at this most of the time here. I am very excited about being here today. This is several times I've been invited to talk here at the Tesla Tech Conference. And it's always interesting to see the technologies and uh, equipment that you would not be exposed to in a regular life. We are going to go over a lot of information very rapidly today. So this is going to be uh, somewhat of a speed course in um, electromagnetic biology. <laughs> Mainstream biology and medicine uses a primary assumption that to influence uh, the body or to create reactions, you have to have physical contact. The idea of action and resist at a distance is foreign, although you know we all know that magnetism certainly works at a distance, but this is not incorporated into conventional biology, into conventional medicine. Uh, back in 1971 when I was doing embryology uh, studying, I began to look at how the embryo was formed and I said, you know, these things have to be lined up on magnetic field lines. There has to be some kind of electromagnetic effect going on here. And I spent a couple of weekends looking through the medical library. There was zero information at that time that you could find on this kind of, informa on this kind of topic. Uh, the Mainstream biologists and medical doctors use what's called quantitative structure activity relationship. That means two molecules have to be in proximity to each other in order to exchange information. But this theory cannot account for the speed of which reactions take place in the human body. Now, LifeWay patches, which is what I'm going to be talking about today, are a technological advance. They are utilizing the management of energy in the body, the recognition that every cell, region of cells, and even cell components operate with utilization of electromagnetic energy has allowed the inventor David Schmidt, who is here today, to tap into the biomagnetic healing process without using an external device. So we're going to be talking about external electronic device. We're going to be talking about using organic electronics today. So the reason organic electronics have some value, a significant value in health, um, is because you can get an exact match on the waveform with an organic electronic. You can also get a match, depending the way the, he's done it, on the amplitude. So you're going to get, and you can get a good exact match on the wavelength. So while I have a whole laboratory full of electromagnetic equipment, and there is certainly value in electromagnetic equipment, you cannot match the waveform exactly unless you're using organic electronic. So what we're doing is we're using wavelengths of light to activate. So the, the patches are passive until they're placed on the human body. And then they're utilizing the infrared coming off the body to activate a signal, which we'll go into. So we're using a method of photobiomodulation. Now, the reason this can work, let me see if I can get, I need three hands here. If you look at the exterior of a cell, and you look at the cell receptors, now this is a graphical example of cell receptors, You'll see they look a lot like microwave antennas. <laughs> if you ever studied antenna theory, 
You'll also, but of course, these are not microwave range. They're in the infrared range, so they're subsequently much smaller. They're at the molecular level. So what happens is, as you begin to see this from the point of view of an electronics engineer, say, you begin to recognize you can use some of the concepts of communication technology, antenna physics technology, and start looking how the body is designed to receive and transmit electromagnetic energies through biological electronic circuits, as well as wireless communication mechanisms. So we find that the cell surface proteins act as detectors and receivers of chemical messages. And this is the conventional training in um, medicine, pharmacology, is that your cell receptors are chemical docking ports for a reaction to take place. And you know, we're using random fluctuations, you know, that this molecule is going to, you know, circulate from one place to another and it's going to have this reaction. This cannot account, in my opinion, for the, the speed of reactions that take place. And this is certainly doesn't account for the biophysics properties, biophysical properties of chemistry. Because when you actually study chemistry, you'll find that what you're doing is you're transmitting moving charge. I mean, chemistry basically gets down to electronics at a basic level is you're moving charge from one molecule to another. And what happens is how are these molecules attracted to each other? How is it this possible? And so what you begin to see is that these cell membrane receptors have specific activities that can act as detectors, amplify. There's, there are actually circuits built into the cell level that there's signal amplification. You have signal transduction. Now, for me to go through this part of the lecture would take about eight hours, because I've given this lecture all around the world. It takes me all day long to get through this part. So I'm not going to be able to pass. I'm going I'm to have to pass over this part here. But what we're looking at, when you're looking at the structure of a protein, it has a three-dimensional structure. It's folded a certain way. And there's what's called the charge on the backbone of the amino acid chains that determines the way that the protein folds. And what occurs is if this protein, say, is an enzyme, when it goes into an active state, it falls into a different shape. Or when the enzymatic reaction is over, it falls back. So basically, if you start thinking about this, you have the concept of charge moving, folding, charge moving back, unfolding. You're looking at electronic switching. So you're seeing, beginning to see that the conformational shape of the structure of the protein, the cell membrane levels, can actually, to some degree, act like an electronic switch. And so we see that there are a number of physical modalities that can activate these antennae. And we, we, everybody knows about chemist, chemical reactions, the pharmacology reactions that take place. Then there's acupuncturists. They have found that you needle with an acupuncture needle, you can actually create a piezoelectric transmission of, of uh, a signal through the body because the muscle tissues, the connective tissues, have natural piezoelectric properties. They're liquid crystals. We also see that acoustical reactions can activate these uh, receptors. You can see lasers and phototherapy units. There's Certainly several people out there using phototherapy here, and they are demonstrating with their units the concept of phototherapy acting on these re photoreceptors. So you have photoreceptors, ph chromophores. You have materials that are designed to activate with light. We all know that if you are looking and you're not colorblind, you can see different colors of light as different protein molecules, the rods and cones in your eyes are activated by different wavelengths or frequencies of light. You see the same thing with ultraviolet light, activating the skin and creating vitamin D, active vitamin D. You see the same thing if you get a suntan. 
You're seeing photobiology in place constantly, but now we're taking you to a deeper level here. So we also see you can activate these with electromagnetic signals as well as with patches. So there's an organizing energy field around the body. This standing energy field is thought to regulate the neural and chemical control systems of the body. And it's the primary information system of the body. It's involved in pattern formation, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the embryological observation I made in 71. It was in my head. I didn't write about it. But I, I, I have it in my notebooks going back to 71. And it can be frequency modulated. Now we start looking at how we can tap into this. So frequency modulation of the body's oscillating electromagnetic field provides the capability of using the body's own energy field as a carrier wave for information. Much like a radio station frequency modulates a radio carrier wave signal to carry voice information. So we're going to look at how you can utilize proper frequency codes to activate cellular processes such as pain control, antioxidant production, increasing energy at a cellular level. Now, no drugs or supplements means that these patches are neither fish nor fowl. And I, I've always liked the shark bird myself over here in the bottom corner. <laughs> Now, David Schmidt is the inventor of LifeWave technology. And his, the idea of the patches originated when he was asked by a government, con government contractor to find new ways to keep Navy personnel alive longer in the event of an accident. I will have to say the shark patch hasn't been that effective yet, uh, but we need more volunteers. <laughs> so what is the scientific basis for LifeWave technology? Now, we know any object and I'm talking to the group that understands this better than I do, has a re natural resonant frequency. And so two objects that have similar resonant frequencies can interact without touching, and their vibrations can be coupled or entrained. Now, we know that the basis of the human body, it has metabolic reactions. And the body operates in a ni nicely tight range uh, as far as the f wavelengths of energy that the body is designed to utilize. It starts in the near ultraviolet, very close to visible light range. There's a little bit of effect right there. You certainly have visible light range effects. And anybody who wanted to look up, photo, look up phototherapy can find thousands of articles on the use of different frequencies and say the red, red range of in pain control and in energy production. Then you get into the infrared band. Now the body puts out a lot of infrared. And what happens is we have incorrectly in our mind delegated this to the ash heap of history by calling it waste heat. It's not waste heat. It is the summation of all the regulatory processes that are taking place in your body. And there has, it has information content. And that information content can go bidirectionally. It can go both ways. So what we find is specific wavelengths of light are designed to activate specific biological effects. So with the, when we look at life wave technology, we find that we're using specific polymers and organic materials to reflect infrared. That the human body generates infrared, and we already know that infrared wavelengths can produce biological effects such as pain relief. Even the FDA has recognized non-heating infrared effects, and that's 25 years behind the times. Multiple research programs, including NASA, have, and they use them on submarines, and they use them on NASA space station, as well as the um, International Space Station, as they, they, did, they created LED phototherapy devices for wound healing. They found that the astronauts do not heal in space, or submariners do not heal properly in long submarine voyages unless they are exposed to some of these natural frequencies of light. They have biological beneficial effects that are necessary for wound healing energy production. Now, I think I missed something here, let's see. 
Now, what we find with LifeWay patches is that we will, they will specifically reflect wavelengths of infrared light and that the, the body is the power source. So we have a technology that uses the body as the power source to generate a signal. And I, the best analogy I can look at is their crystal radio sets. They're crystal radio sets, but they're not operating in radio frequency range. They're operating in infrared radio or communication range. So what we look at is a, the specific unique construction shows that these patches are capable of generating metabolic changes. And one of the changes we've generated, or David Schmidt, I have to give him full credit for this, is that he's been able to come up with a technology that will increase glutathione, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Now, we already know that the body is infra generates infrared, and this is a really great example here of looking at how this infrared comes through the uh, material of that plastic bag. Now, this is an example of some of our proprietary research, uh, just one slide, though, uh, showing an FTIR looking at the specific wavelengths of infrared energy that are transmitted by the patches. And by changing the formulas of the patches, we change this signature pattern here. This is a great example of how you can have a physiological effect in minutes. On the left, you see a picture of a body that has, this is, the red areas are warm. And what happens is this person's been patched. You can actually see one of the patches right here. And this demonstrates a five, within five minutes, we can see up to four degrees centigrade cooling effect in inflamed areas. It's been duplicated hundreds of times. We've done human studies. We have done horse studies. We're getting ready to publish a 38-horse study demonstrating this effect in horses also. And horses don't believe in placebos. I don't know. I mean, how many of y'all got a horse that believes in a placebo? I'd like to see him. Now, so here's one of the horses that was in the study. He was having a bad day. And his friend had to lay down and was attacked by this terrible hunting creature here. But uh, this is actually a picture from our study. And here's this horse, and you're looking at its uh, right side. And this would be the left side of the horse. This is the camera before picture. And here's the interesting thing. This is a cold area here. You can actually see a change after a few minutes of having these patches placed on where the cool area begins to warm. And so this is, and this hot area had about a four degree centigrade change. And I think this is about a 10 minute slide. So this is not a five minute, but we've done numerous five minute studies so we know we can see a change two to four to, sometimes five degrees centigrade in minutes with this technology. And one of the things we've learned is that we can increase the electrical conductivity of tissues. We've, got, we've learned lots of stuff, and our website is lifewave.com, lifewave.com. And there are numerous articles that we've published on the website, as well as unpublished studies that are on the website to describing the technology and the research that we've done. Now, LifeWave technology uses a patches we use proprietary solutions of optically, optically, I'll get that word out, optically active organic stereoisomers. Now, this may mean nothing to most of you, but some of you are going to go, ah. Oh. And so what we do is we put these solutions between and, and create a reservoir. We have two pieces of polyethylene polymers, and we have a sealed chamber. And inside this sealed chamber is a piece of special polyester fabric that we wet with this solution. And you say, why do they put that fabric in there? Because we're using it as a substrate for self-assembly. We're using what's called solution-based self-assembly. We're, we're, we're creating a, a template where we create molecular antennas. So we find that the patches contain organic molecular antennas. And this is a key word, the organic nature of the patches. That is the brilliance 
that David has come up with. He had, David could have invented innumerable electronic devices that you attach to the body and, with a, you know, some type of frequency generator. And that would have been great, and they would have worked. But this is a new development. This is a very new field of, 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 of medical uh, advance, in my opinion. And it's exciting to see how you can transmit a message from the surface of the skin through the entry points of acupuncture meridians. And we tap into that. Now, we also know that you can actually mathematically calculate how big the crystals need to be. So you're creating antennas, or David's creating antennas, and I'm sure for two beers he'll be glad to give you the full formula of how he does this or not. And um, so what we want to do is if you already know the frequency you want to create, the wavelength can be calculated. So he works backwards. He figures out what frequency that he needs to generate. And then by knowing the wavelength, he can figure out the size or geometry of the antennas he needs to create. So this is a proprietary manufacturing process. It involves nanometer-sized molecular crystals in a non-transdermal patch. Nothing goes in the body. So we find that the enzymes and proteins of the body have the ability to function as semiconductors. They're wet semiconductors. The better hydrated you are, the better the electronic energy flows in the body. That's why hydration is critically important. So we find that at the cellular level, we, find we have cooperative structures that contain components that are nanometer size. And that means that the lengths of wavelengths of energy these components will resonate to must also be nanometer sized. And that's where you get into the infrared band. So we find that the properties of membranes, proteins, DNA, are liquid crystals. So you have intracellular and extracellular proteins, and DNA possess electronic characteristics. So basically, at a biological level, we are electronic beings. We have the ability to resonate and send and receive electromagnetic energy. You can look up Fritz Pop's work on biophoton transmission and emission. You can look up any number of people's work, James Oshman's work on energy medicine. You can, there's, this stuff is accessible now. There's a book called Life Force by um, Charles Swanson, I think it is. It's Claude, Claude, I'm sorry, it's Claude Swanson. And that's a 2009 book written by a physicist, and it's like 600, 700 pages long of the current research in biophysics. It's an impressive treatise or thesis. Now, how do our cells communicate? We have signal induction and signal transduction. But in, in biology, it's thought a chemical comes from the outside to uh, extracellular, maybe comes from the uh, bloodstream through the extracellular space to the exterior of the cell, it binds and generates a reaction. So this is where you're trying to look at. This is signal induction. Okay, so we find this molecule will bind to the receptor. This is how its medicine is taught in the medical schools. This is the only model that ever, doctors ever hear about. So if you go in to tell to them about electronic mechanisms and stuff, they have no foundation to build on. They have no information. And their idea, what happens is you get into the idea if it's, if it's not invented here, it can't be important. So what happens is since they have no foundation to understand it, there's no interest. And so th this is why you, you run your heads into the wall trying to communicate with medical mainstream doctors unless they've had some kind of aha experience that makes them wake up and start searching. So we find that LifeWave utilizes the principle of signal induction and transduction, but we're utilizing the electronic properties of cells to influence cell behavior. We find that nutrients produce signals chemically and LifeWave produces signals electronically. It's no different than how a wireless technology works. I mean, if you were to go back in World War II and pick up a cell phone, let's say you had time transported back there, and told people that you could communicate with telephones 
that there was a power system out there that you could talk on the phone without wires. They put you in a loony bin. You'd be locked up so fast because it's, it's incomprehensible. Everybody knows phones have wires. Now, they, they could say a radio would work. Yeah, okay. But radios back in World War II were, you know, they were big old monsters. So here you got this miniaturized technology. There's no way. Any technology that's scientifically advanced to be incomprehensible is considered to be magic. So this is almost that level. So we look at sympathetic resonance. We look at two tuning forks that are the same frequency. You strike one, the other one will vibrate because of resonant energy transfer. This same phenomenon occurs in all materials, and please put all in quotes. And so we find if we create frequency signals with our patches tuned to the resonance of specific biological structures, we can generate a signal. So we're using molecular antennas to transmit frequencies, specific molecules will respond to. So when our patches are activated, they send out a frequency message, and we use the body's energy field as the carrier wave. It's not real complicated if you understand any radio technology whatsoever. So when molecular crystals in the patches are exposed to the body's oscillating field, the signals are generated that are resonant with certain protein structures and membrane receptors, these structures are known to operate by a communication system, which we mentioned called signal induction. Usually it's a chemical signal, but as I've mentioned in this lecture, it can be an electronic signal or frequency signal. So the activation of these receptors results in coupling and amplification. This is the part that's really important. You get biological amplification at a cellular level. Once you have, once you have a first messenger, you get a biological amplification of billions of times. The body is sensitive to quanta. The eye can respond to one photon. One photon is enough to activate the cell proteins in the eye. One single photon. The body is quantum sensitive. So you don't have to have an extremely loud signal. You have to have an extremely specific signal. And that is the brilliance that David has come up with. Is, the, is that the signal is biologically specific. And that we know that biological molecules have these ability to pick up these signals. Now it's just a matter of creating a device that can generate these signals. We already know that uh, our electronic devices usually use silicone or germanium semiconductors. Yet the body has the ability to have its own semiconduction it has liquid crystal substances such as proteins, cell membranes, DNA, RNA that have electrical conductivity greater than insulators and that solid liquid crystalline semiconductors use the base material for computer chips and other electronic communication devices so it's not a really great stretch to recognize that the body's own liquid crystal semiconductors can also be used for communication devices at a cellular level, and this is what, if you study the biophysics, the new biophysics is coming out, this is all over it. Biological electrical currents will flow. There's a continual circulation of energy at a cellular level, and this will flow through the semiconducting proteins in the connective tissue and deeper down into the organs. These electrical currents will flow through and above cell, and around cell membranes, and life wave patches stimulate acupuncture points by changing the electrical potential of cell membranes, creating a flow of electrical current just like needles. As a matter of fact, they are more effective than needles in acupuncture. We see at a cellular level, there is an inward and an outward flow. Now, this is important because if you start looking at electron structure by Wolf, among other people, you'll find that at a say at an electronic level, every electron is connected to every other electron. At the center of the electron, there's a out inward flow that comes from every other other every other electron in the universe, it reverses at the center and goes in outward flow. And if you look at the law of global scaling, you'll see that any phenomenon that's primary in the universe will repeat at all levels. That's a very important concept. 
Now, biological liquid crystals that the body is composed of, such as hyaluronic acid, which a great deal of it is present in your connective tissue and joints, the proteins of the body, both external and internal to the cell, the cell membrane, the DNA, the RNA, they're involved in maintaining an inward and outward current. You can read the book of Merrill Garnett, First Pulse, First Pulse, Merrill Garnett. He's written about his work. He's an electrochemist who has spent 40 years studying the electronic nature of cells. You know, it's great to have a theory, but if you've got a lab bench and you're actually studying this material, you're going to have understanding is far beyond somebody who's sitting up in our office reading articles written by other people. So Merrill Garnett's work is critically important in understanding these concepts and his book is called First Pulse. He is the inventor of poly MVA, M motor vehicle accident, MVA. And um, it's a cancer treatment. Now I wrote a book on the electric, electrical properties of cancer cells. It's on the web for free. And um, actually, I have 15 minutes because they gave me 55 minutes. So you're off by five. All right, he got me. We're going to do a demo in just a few minutes. I'm going to hope try to get through this lecture. But anyway, there's an inward and outward current, and there's actually circuits built in where the current passes from the exterior of the cell through the interior to the mitochondria to the DNA back out, and so we find these direct currents flow, and we. We're going to look at ice wave for a moment. It, all those lectures about glutathione, I hope we'll get to that in more detail. And we create biocurrents. We have positive and negative patches. Now, if we look at solar eruptions and the magnetic field lines coming out here, and we think about global scaling, and then we think about acupuncture points, you'll see that the phenomenon of magnetic fields that come out of acupuncture points just look just like sunspot eruptions of magnetic field lines. That's why some people can feel the acupuncture meridians. It feels like a bubbling spring. Clinical studies validate the life wave patches engage and balance electrical properties of the body. Acupuncture points are entry points of the body's electrical systems. They're high, in, high electrical conductivity. They overlie the connective tissue semiconducting proteins which we already know are semiconductive pi pi piezoelectric and pyroelectric. They'll respond to heat and pressure. We use special equipment in our research, much like a private detective uses, to investigate the effect of life wave patches. If we're looking at a man, the simple equi equipment's very simple. If we're looking at a woman, it's a lot more detailed. <laughs> Glutathione is a major antioxidant. It acts as a free radical scavenger. It recycles vitamin C, E, lipoic acid. So it's a recycling molecule. Helps maintain the immune system, protects DNA, supports its protein structure, helps remove mercury from the body and other heavy metals. Oral glutathione can be destroyed by stomach acids. Oral supplements will give you 30 to 40 percent rise, usually over about 30 days. Glutathione injections are very effective, but they are impractical for the average person because of the expense. They're usually about $200, $150-$200 a piece. You've got to get them weekly. What's desirable is that technology can increase glutathione rep levels rapidly and safety, safely. That could be implemented and de deployed to a large population. And so we have the LifeWave is non-transdermal, more effective than oral supplements, works all day. It's a new method. We can get up a three times average increase within 24 hours. And it's elevated electronically, not through a supplement. And this effect is measurable by blood testing. We did some blood tests, and I'm going to go real quick because I want to do a demo real quick. Average increase was three times above baseline. We had increase in heavy metal output about 30% over baseline. This is the raw data from one of the patch studies of 15 people, the baseline day, then we did five days when they were patched. The summary is the third data set over here. Average blood level of the baseline compared to the average blood level of the glutathione was went from 2,020 to 7,326, the average rise. That's the average level. It was a significant increase of over three times this is a good example of the graph showing the first day. 
We got 3.65 times increase after for 24 hours. When taken all 15 people's average, life waiver supplements, glutathione supplement. I did a five-day study here. Uh, I'll give you an example, uh, but not 40 percent, and that's over 30 days many times. But glutathione patches, we can go up by 300 percent. So there's a lot of things glutathione are involved in. One of the things is anti-aging, and that's what we're interested in. These are but people that have not used LifeWay patches, and uh, before using the patches, and this is the same people after the patches. To give you an example, how effective they are. The guy on the right at left is my son. <laughs> that is that is well, I'm choking here. This, but the guy on the left is my son. He uh, he's a male model. All right, so we have potential military applications because we know that chemical warfare agents will lower glutathione, infectious agents will lower glutathione, the propellants you use to fire the guns, the tanks, the bazookas, whatever, they all have an oxidizing agent that's extremely toxic to the human body that lowers glutathione levels. The military is involved actively in looking for technologies to increase glutathione. We did a second blood study of nine people. This time we did three baseline days over uh, to collect blood. And the results show that LifeWave patches increased blood glutathione significantly, although there was some variability in baseline measurements. All of the average measurements after patch placement were above 264. Now this wasn't 300%, but it was pretty close to 300%. So it pretty much validated the first study. One person went up 454%. So we find that substantial increases occurred, and the people that had the best response are the ones that started with the lowest glutathione levels. So we find the LifeWay patch raised glutathione levels in healthy subjects, and we got a placebo control study of 40 people underweight. We've done other, t other experiments, gas discharge visualization, Invented by a Russian, I think, I'm going to terribly pronounce this right, I'm going to say Korkatov, but I know I didn't get close. Uh, anyway, this is using, uh, instead of a photographic plate, using glass electrodes, and you're looking at an electrical impulse to stimulate a biological subject and generate a response and form a photon electron emission. And here are some patches that have been placed on a GDV device. I, th I always found this fascinating to look at the biological substrate in there, so like a Karelian photography. So it's very fascinating. You get a Karelian effect. And this is a person that's been patched. This was done in Toronto. We placed them on their kidney three points. These are bottom of your feet. And after 10 minutes of patching, the field increased by 73, about almost 74 percent, the field density. Now, we did some studies done at the Center for Biofield Sciences in India. We've done a PIP, poly contrast interference photography, gas discharge visualization, electro interstitial scans on 400 people. And this is an example of both increasing energy and rearranging energy was consistent finding in all GDV studies or life weight patches. And this was a study of 50 people with a glutathione patch you'll see that about in the GDV, about 74% had a stronger field, 18%, uh, no change. 10% actually the field went down a little bit. And what we find when we test these people is they're releasing lots of toxins. So we're getting a, the detox effect in a sense is so overwhelming, some people have to take the glutathione patches off early. And this is another example with 20 subjects. Oh, I thought he was telling you. And um, positive change in 14, no change in 3, negative change in field intensity. We're looking at field intensity here. So what we looked at, and this is one with 30, uh, positive in 80%. So this was, um, seems crystal clear that ice wave and glutathione patches have profound effects in pain management. And you saw the people up here out of the audience, the ones we patched all had some degree of reduction in pain, or at least the ones that we talked to did. Um, so we find that experimental changes in the biofield are strongly positive in the after scans. This was five studies with over 400 subjects. Prove a high percentage of participants experienced significant pain and symptom relief using the life wave as composed to the control groups, which showed very little effect.
So this was a placebo-based study, and guess what happened with the placebos? They didn't see anything. This is an EIS system. It's non-invasive bioimpedance analysis, determines organ functions electronically, and helps monitor effective of treatments. And this is an example of how the st study participant would look with pads on the hands, the feet, and electrodes on the scalp or the forehead. The DC current is produced through bioelectric impedance, specifically passes through the interstitial fluid compartment and the surrounds the cells. And so you actually can get a reading about organ function through this technology. And what we found is that 30 subjects wore, bioglutath wore glutathione patches for 30 days, tested weekly, and evidence showed through the study that the electrical properties of the organs improved and toxins were being mobilized. And here is the outcome of study results. It's a little complicated to read up here, but I'll summarize. We did two different groups, one with 10 participants, one with 20 participants. One group wore the patches five days a week. The other group wore the patches every day of the week. The best response was when they were wore them every day. We had significant effects on the, on the or, organs uh, of the baseline, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, intestines, adrenals, hypothalamus, pituitary, in the subjects tested. We've done EEG result work, and um, this was very important work. We've had this done two different centers now, and what we find, we, we started doing EEG when we started getting reports for people getting improved speech, improved mobility, improved balance, and even dancing. Time to go. All right, I'm going to go through here and say alpha wave activity increased. That was one of the significant findings, and thank you very much.